You're listening to Life Check Yourself with life coach, transformational leader, and dating and relationship badass, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important life and love issues you want to know about. So if you're ready to life check yourself in your relationships, your career, and the areas of your life that matter most to you, and you're not afraid to be called out on your uh, stuff, then you're ready for what's next. Life Check Yourself with Robbie Kramer. Three secret qualities that men find most attractive in a woman. Ladies, welcome to Life Check Yourself. I am here. Ooh, you're going to love it. It's Robbie Kramer is in the house. This is everything you ever wanted to know about what the hell are men thinking? Because Robbie has been (laughs) guiding men to accomplish their goals with women. He also does health, fitness, and career. Uh, Since 2008, he, he founded Inner Confidence to show men exactly how to create the lifestyle of their dreams in a way that works. And like me, he does not believe in quick fixes or magic pills or any bullshit, just test proven and easily implementable advice that works. He brings dignity and ease to traditionally taboo interactions. He is not one of those, what do they call it? Pua pickup artist guys. He's not into that shit. No pickup routines, no fake stories, no tricking women into liking you just real attraction and connection. He has worked with over a thousand clients on six continents. I think you all want to meet those a thousand men uh, and listen to Robbie as a, a podcast called the leverage podcast. It's a, it's a biggie. You're going to want to check that out. Robbie, I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. I love the intro. I love your energy, by the way. It's so, thank, so contagious. <laughs> thank you. So let's. So here, I was just saying to you even before uh, before we hit the old play button or the record button, is that most women are making up stories about men and what men think, and I think they picture men as the evil opponent, right? And you have to like armor up. And like, you know, freaking train. Go to battle. Yeah. I think like, you know, I heard a Dak Shepard talk on uh, Jimmy Kimmel about how like he just wanted to get hired for a Marvel movie so he could get buff. (laughs) Right. Like, you know, like in Hollywood, they're like, you're going to be a superhero. Start training. Um, And I think women are like, all right, I need to be up for this. Like it is the real deal. So like just at the top level, like what do you think is the biggest like urban legend that women have about men. Yeah, it's it's so funny because, you know, both sides make up all these crazy stories and whatever you're struggling with something, you know, if that's your dating life, of course, you're going to start making up all these reasons why it's not working for you, right? Because taking responsibility is not always the first thing we do, unfortunately. Right. right? So, you know, the, the, the thing that I've definitely seen like you said, just women, you know, they're, they're thinking that men are do, just doing all this crazy stuff that they're not doing. Like the guys I work with and most guys in general, like, you know, the guys who are overthinking this stuff are doing the same thing that the women are doing, right? This overthinking leads to just tons of issues and problems. And it doesn't get you anywhere, right? Trying to think what the other person is doing or it's just, you know, what do they, they call it? Um, uh, paralysis analysis. Yeah. Right. And yeah. And, and it's like the guys I work with, they're just, you know, they're doing what they're doing and they're just trying to get dates. And when they do get a date, you know, they're just trying to like, make sure they don't screw up the basic stuff, like where to go, what to do, you know, not stick their foot in their mouth in the beginning of the, <laughs> of the conversation. And they're so worried about themselves. They don't even really, you know, all, all they're like, okay, she's attractive. I'm into her from a looks perspective at first, of course, because that's the first thing that, that you're going to obviously, you know, if, if you're not mutually attracted to each other, you're not going on that date. Right. But after that, like all, everything else, is, it's so internal. Both sides don't even like, <laughs> if, you just, if, if you're worrying about what the other person's doing, you're just putting so much shit in the way because the other person's just worrying about what they're doing too. Mm, so I love it. So we talk about this um, energy that women 
can get into, I call it like the get mentality, right? Where they're like, how do I get him to respond? How do I get him to ask me out? How do I get him to want to come in? How do I want, you know, like, and there, it's all about the other person, right? So when right. a woman is in that like anxious get mentality, how do you think men experience that? Like turn off, turn on, what, what do you think the experience it's just, is? Uh... It's a big turn off. It would be similar to a woman experiencing a man who's just trying to get laid. Right. right? Oh, it's totally yeah. agenda based, trying to get somewhere, trying to kind of use that person for their own. You know, you're making the other person like a means to an end, right? If, if you're trying to get laid, it doesn't really matter who. And <laughs> right. And you don't want to be that girl. Right? And, and if, there's a woman who's just trying to get a guy or trying to get a certain guy to do something so she can feel better about herself. Or, you know, maybe she, you know, she really needs a relationship and and she's a little bit desperate and she's just trying to get some guy to, you know, commit. Maybe it's not even the right guy um, just to kind of boost her confidence. So yeah, of course he's going to feel that agenda and it's not going to feel good. And it obviously the stuff is subtle, right? No one's, no one's probably uh, 100% doing that. Right. Right. And if you are, you're probably not getting anything. That guy's never getting laid in that. That, that woman's really, never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Not getting in that relationship. What so am- that's yeah. If you're, if you're operating from that agenda, it's just really unattractive and a huge turnoff. And what, are the things that you think women do that evoke that energy? Like one thing I talk about is, um, I, (laughs) in texting, I call it the rule of thumb. Like don't be sending these texts that are like longer than your thumb. (laughs) Right. Like, like, you know, like, (laughs) like (laughs) yeah. So like, what do you think? Like on a date, what are women doing? Is it that they're talking too much about work? Are they interviewing? Like, what are the actual things that they do on these dates or on the, zoom date or even in emails or in their profile, like what are they doing? You think that evoke that? Yeah. So I experienced this a lot when I was living in New York, this was back in like 2013. I was around 30 years old and very much single and out on the hunt, you know, going on three or four dates a week, right? New York city. It's like the easiest place to get dates for, for both sides. Cause there's nothing else to do. And you know, in the city, it's just, you got to go out. You don't want to stay in your, tiny little apartment right right right. city so right you feel bad about yourself if you're if you're staying inside there so anyways but what i felt was there were so many women that would just bombard me with these like what do you do what's your job what qualifies you to do that how much but it was very much like trying to base me or, or like trying to judge me based on what I did, how much money I made, and whether or not that would fit their sort of prospect for a long-term partner candidate. And it, it, you know, the first question would always be like, what do you do? Uh, and where'd you go to school? And who do you work for? And <laughs> it's like, you know, I can answer those questions. That's fine. Um, and I, I obviously love those questions because when I tell them I'm a dating coach, they they have no idea what the hell to do with that. Yeah, right? they're like, uh... <laughs> they're <usually> expecting... <laughs> Yeah. What, what, what a dating coach. Um, but I would just see that all the time. And, um, it was just such a turnoff. And when I, it was funny because that same year after moving to New York, I spent a summer in Europe and for whatever reason, the European mentality, and this isn't just, you know, you call it a New York thing, or maybe it's more of an American thing. And, and I I don't think it's just women, it's just our culture in general, but we're, we're way more focused on, on work and career and getting ahead. Whereas the European style is more like, oh, let's take a little nap. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah totally. Hours and let's, let's live life. Let's drink some wine, right? So the, the question I've always getting in Europe is like, so where have you been? Or, you know, tell me more about your passions. And that felt a lot better to me for whatever reason, because it wasn't so much of a, an agenda, like where this person seemed like they were trying to get to know me versus make sure I fit into their sort of box to see if we would work down the road. And, you know, the truth is, it's like, if, if you're weeding people out based on these small criteria, um, you know, you're, you're really just asking to, I I think it's a a mechanism. It's like an imposter syndrome where you're, you're basically like, okay, if this person isn't within this criteria, I'm not going to date them. And then you make those, that criteria extremely small. And then you get to tell yourself the story that 
there's no one out there for me. I can't be you know, and and dating is not my fault. It's just there's no one in my category. Right? That's so and, important. Um, but did you hear that, ladies? That is so important. Like we make our criteria so small and maybe miss misguided or not focused on the bigger things. And then you basically are ruling out everyone. Right. And then, and then you get to be right about that story that, you know, yeah. there's no one out there for you. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you guys like want I'll, it, I'll, if you guys want to be right, you can, I mean, you know, but like, <laughs> why bother? Um, let me ask you this. So what's the biggest mistake that men make on dates? Uh, they, they t- pick a horrible venue and they just do a really bad job of making a plan. Right. If yes. My <laughs> belief is the, the guy. I like, the yes. The other person on the date. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, if, if you're asking someone on a date, it's your job to come up with a plan. Right. And I even tell my guy clients, I'm like, listen, if, if a woman asks you out, you should still come up with a plan because it's kind of the more masculine thing to do. And Hey, if she wants to come up with it, that's great too. But you should definitely have a plan no matter what, because if she doesn't, then you're going to need a backup. And, um, I'm a big proponent of, you know, telling my clients they should be leading, you know, they should take on that sort of masculine energy and quarterback a date in the right way. It's not that hard if you put some thought into it, but most Mm. guys don't really think about it. There's like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to go to dinner. Right. And they, they think of a restaurant, but dinner dates, in my opinion, are the worst first dates I agree. You're immediately, yeah, they suck. You're you're injecting a shitload of friction into the experience. Right? You, you show up, and immediately, you're first you're dealing with a host or a hostess. Yeah. And they seat you, and then you're trying to have like a small talk conversation. People are constantly coming over to bother you. You're trying to look at the menu and figure out what to eat while trying to have a good conversation. It just doesn't work, right? It's impossible to be present and really like engaged with the person you're talking to when you're trying to figure out what to order. No, to- <laughs> well, totally. And then you're like, is it too much? Like who's you already start right. to think about who's going to pay. Exactly. What, what, you know, should I eat the spaghetti? What if I get it on my shirt? Right. Well, she's, you know, what, <laughs> is it <laughs> true <laughs> that men, is it true that men, when you, when a woman orders a salad, a guy's like, Oh God, she's a salad person. Is that true? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe some guys, <laughs> uh, but- I mean, but I think it's more of a red flag or I, not a red flag, but like if, if I was on a dinner date and she sat down and she's like, give me the T-bone steak. I mean, I, I think that's great. Cause I love, I love steak, but I'd be like, all right, <laughs> that's aggressive. <laughs> that's so funny. But these are, this is exactly why dinner is such a shitty idea. You're like, exactly. a steak is, yeah, I'm always, yeah. And I think women are so weird anyway. We're like, I don't know. I should get, I mean, like, you know, I, I should order the sea bass because then, you know, but I really actually want like the fucking fettuccine alfredo okay so day so <laughs> dinner dinner out not a great first date so guy a guy who can like make a bigger plan is so much better so dinner sucks yeah dinner sucks and it's so easy to quarterback a date it's actually the, the first thing that i like to teach guys and it's like the front and center like giveaway thing on my website because everyone sucks at planning first dates unless you've either gotten advice for someone or you stumbled across this by going on tons of first dates in which case you're hopefully not continuing to go on first dates forever. But the first venue, so I have like a three venue sort of deal. And the first venue, the only point, it should be like 30 minutes to 45 max. And it's just to get past that small talk conversation. Meet at a coffee shop, meet at a bar, meet at a frozen yogurt place in the park or a gelato stand and just walk around or just sit on a bench. And you just do the, you know, you get that 30, 45 minutes of bullshit bluff talk out of the way. Right. And you know, you can't, you can't avoid that. Right. And you can have a lot of fun with that. You can be flirty with that, but that's kind of what always happens in the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes on a date. And then if you're vibing and if it's going well, then I suggest changing venues, going to like a speakeasy or a lounge or something that's a little bit more swanky, some good cocktails. Um, and that's kind of when the juicier conversation can kick in and it starts getting a little bit more intimate and, and interesting. Uh, but you know, that's never going to happen. You know, you're not, you're not going to sit down at dinner and 45 minutes into it, like feel that sort of shift in energy. You're just going to be in that same sort of boring initial 30 to 45 minutes. Maybe you're clicking and that's great. And of course it can work out, but you're just really doing yourself a disservice. So I think from both sides, dating would be so much easier if people just drop the dinner stuff and they understood that, 
if in order to change the, the kind of the chemistry and the dynamic on the date, the best way to do that is just to change venues because it kind of mm-hmm. gives you that like reset and it allows you to just change the vibe. And you can, it, it's so easy to do that. It, it has nothing to do with your personality. It has nothing to do with like her personality. It's just have a plan and go to some different spots. So if, a, so let me ask you this. So if a guy is like, Hey, you know, like I'd love to take you to dinner and it's your first interaction. What's a way that a woman can gracefully without, you know, taking him out of his like lion roar zone, um, of suggesting right. <laughs> something else? Like, is, do you, do you just say, okay. Or do you say, wow, that, you uh, know, yeah. Like how can we, how can I, we no. edit? You could totally be kind of like tricky and clever with it by saying, sure, um, and tell them what day you're free, right? Yeah. And then maybe like that day in the morning, you'd be like, hey, I got some late work stuff. Can we just meet after dinner for drinks? Because I won't be able to make dinner. And he'll probably be like, oh, that's awesome. I don't have to spend money on dinner. (laughs) This is great. <laughs> or you know he'll I'm I don't I don't think there's a single guy on the planet if he's excited for a date he's gonna cancel because she wanted to push it back and skip dinner. Oh my I, god! I okay, what about that. this? What about <laughs> if he suggests dinner and you say like, well, I like your idea of just saying okay, that's great, like when and where, and then you say hey, like I'd love to get to dinner. Why don't we start and meet? Da, 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 so that like we can feel like the vibe or is that like too like a guy's like oh shit she wants to like test drive me first um i mean it's it's a little bit like that but at the same time it's not like that because you're suggesting drinks which is more casual right like the, the thing or I coffee lot, i've got a lot of clients right yeah I, i've got a lot of clients who who like to use the uh seeking of you know that site it's like a sugar baby site ew <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's oh with the, you know the older guys, and they're they're looking for that, and uh, it's definitely like a really sort of toxic place to date. And the thing that I'm always telling them, like guys, get off these shitty online dating sites, especially this one, because when they suggest you know grabbing drinks or coffee, the women on there will be like, no, take me to you know the the nicest restaurant in town, and you know they're going the opposite way; they're going towards dinner because they're you know they're trying to. They're just trying to you know, eat. They're in it for different reasons. <laughs> they're just trying to eat. <laughs> exactly. And in some countries, they're they're getting cash back on the check. So. Oh, my God. Okay. So we know. Stay away from that website, ladies. <laughs> okay. So, okay. I like this a lot because I feel like a lot of my clients are like, oh, God, that's too much. Like, I don't want to go to dinner, but I don't want to, like, you know, take him out of his, like, you know, roar zone. And so... And I, the only thing I'm like, I'm not a big fan of like, sort of like making up a story. So I'm just wondering if they're, you know, saying like, Oh, didn't, you yeah. know, canceled, um, is yeah, like, you totally, you know, like, I just wonder, like, you, you, go ahead. Yeah. I think you just, you could just be like, Hey, um, kind of just what you said. I don't think you're going to take him out of the roar zone. And if you did, that's probably not a guy you want anyways. Yeah. No right? shit. He's right. So secure that he can't. Yeah. Like if he can't deal with that, like you're just, he sucks. So, okay, let me uh, ask. I'm totally down with your thing. Okay, I just want to make sure because so I'm not an expert at men. Okay, so let me ask you this one: Why? <laughs> I feel like I'm championing every woman who's ever asked me a question right now. I feel like the pressure's on. Um, why <laughs> do men send dick pics, and why do they go online and set and take mere fucking selfies? Why? Why, Robbie? Why? Oh man. I, I wish I could tell you. Um, <laughs> I think that, you know, the psychology around the dick pic thing is so weird. Um, I think most of the guys that are probably sending dick pics are probably getting laid and they're doing it for the shock value. Uh. Just to kind of, you know, just to, just to like kind of get the reaction. So I think there's, there's maybe some of those guys but they're really immature. And then, you know, I don't know. Cause I don't come across those t- types of guys very often. Those, those are not the guys who reach out for coaching. That, 
Okay, so this is a really important nuance here, right? Because women are always saying, you know, why are we doing all the work? And I just really want you to hear that Robbie is super uh, busy helping quality men want to be better men and better humans. And so I just think that's really important. Like, because I think that what happens is women focus so much on the guys who send the dick pics or the shitty mirror selfies. And they're like, there's nugget men. They're all, you know, whatever it is, because those guys are shocking. And right. what you said earlier is so important. You're collecting evidence that you're right, that there's no good men out there. So like, who gives a shit if there's mirror selfie guys, those aren't your guys. You want Robbie's guys. I mean, those guys are doing you a favor by telling you right off the bat that they're, you know, <laughs> black flag, you're out, right? Like, yeah. You should s- hope he sends a mirror selfie or a dick pic because then you don't have to waste more, more time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and don't, and find out early. <laughs> yeah. And don't let that derail you. Right. Because that's part of the process because you're, you know, you're dealing, you're dealing with humans. Okay. My other question is this, do you think there is a time, like a set of circumstances around men settling down or wanting to commit or being ready to actually have a long-term relationship. Do you, do you think there's a time, like how can a woman assess if that's what she's looking for? Yes, I definitely think so. Um, I, you know, I'm the best, uh, sort of, what do you call it? Um, case study for that. Okay. Um, I'm engaged. I'm 39. Um, so I got engaged when I was 38. Um, and prior to that, I was, you know, like a self-proclaimed man whore. Okay. Like honest, authentic man whore. Like, you know, the, the women I was dating and sleeping with knew I was a man whore. They, they weren't, you know, and it, it worked for me. Um, Did a bunch of them want to try and change you into a commitment guy? Um. I mean, I, in the beginning, many years ago, yes, because I wasn't, what I found was that when I wasn't being like authentically kind of walking the sort of, or, or living the sexual sort of lifestyle I wanted, then that was happening. And that led to a lot of heartbreak and drama. And I wasn't very happy about some of the, I felt guilty about some of the things I did. Cause yeah, some women wanted to sort of change me. I mean, the, the whole sort of like, Correct me if I'm wrong, but every romance novel I've ever come across, it's the same plot, right? It's, it's a there's a guy who has a lot of options and he's beautiful and all this crap, like you know the knight in shining armor, but he's broken and you know women want to change him and make him like the perfect sort of guy for their relationship, right? Right. So I was definitely like a a, a fixer upper guy, right? I was mm. the guy who he could be such a good guy if he would just stop being, you know, such a a Peter Pan sort of thing. Right. right? Yes. Um, and it, it actually, it took me a long time to get to, I had all these insecurities and incompetence issues, which led me to this line of work. But when I finally started having some abundance and choice in my dating life, I wanted to make up for the lost time of like, I, I wanted to sleep around. I wanted to like get that, you know, sow the wild oats as they say. And I needed a long time to do that. Like I didn't feel ready for like a monogamous commitment until my like late mid, mid to late thirties. Before that, I just really wanted to like, you know, have fun, and have a crazy time. Yeah. And, and so I did kind of make a mistake of getting into some relationships before that. Um, the little voice in my head was like, you know, you probably, I really love the girl and, and the, the, some of these women that I was with, but I knew in the back of my mind that I wasn't quite ready and a couple times, you know, a year or two went by and then that nagging little voice, you know, reared its ugly head and said, you know, you're not really ready for this. And then those were obviously hurtful breakups. Right. Right. Um, especially if, you know, one of my partners was in her like early 30s and she wanted to start a family and, you know, we were together for a couple of years. And that's like very valuable time, you know, if the, the clock's ticking. Right. 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 So, you know, if you're if you're in that sort of phase in your life where you're looking for a commitment. You're looking to start a family soon. You feel that pressure from the shot clock. Like I definitely would not, <laughs> would not try to be changing some guy who's a player into a long-term commitment guy. Cause that guy's not going to change and he's just going to waste your time and he's not going to waste your time on purpose necessarily, but right. you're, you're not going to change anyone in a relationship. You need the guy who's like 
you know, be with me, let's move this along. Like you need the guy to be very much, you know, at the, at the helm of, of pushing for that as well. It should, it should be an equal investment, right? You should both no, be wanting so that at the same huge. level. that's so huge. And this used to drive me nuts when I do that. We talked about man panels and I'd get these dudes that I would be like, are you looking, you know, looking for a relationship? And they'd be like, well, if I met the right person. And I always just feel like that's code for no, but right. I'll sleep with you. And then maybe I'll grow out of my need to like, <laughs> you know, but I just think that this is a really important distinction for ladies who are dating, because I think that when we have some unresolved shit, we like are selectively mute. Like we hear what we want to hear. We like paint the picture to make it look like we want it to be because of the potential or the possibility. And the, the choice point is what, what Robbie's saying is like, there's actually guys who are like running down the street with metaphor who are like, I'm ready signs, right? Like, so that will look and feel different. So then, so then what is, happens with the guy? Like, how does he know? Like, okay, now I'm ready. And then how does she know? Does she ask him? Like, what, what do you think that looks like? So, so yeah, what I was, <laughs> I even had the reputation obviously of being a, you know, a party boy. Right. Yeah. Um, and my fiance knew about my reputation, um, but was still curious to meet me. And when we met, um, and sort of like, you know, went on a series of dates and, and that developed, I was, you know, before that I was totally looking for someone. And even though she, she didn't know that, um, and I had the opposite reputation, she could feel that big time because my energy completely changed around mm. that. And I was the one that was, you know, let's, let's be monogamous, let's commit. Right. And she was kind of shocked <laughs> to hear those things from me. Um, and in a good way, of course, because I had to kind of undo that, that reputation that I had in her mind, of course. Um, and that, like, I always say that, you know, when it comes to, to dating and obviously with, with the, gender roles changing and depending where you are, but traditionally kind of like men have always kind of held the commitment card where women hold the sex card. Right. right? And if a man is super fast to play the commitment card, that's usually a red flag. Um, with the sex card, I, I kind of disagree, but you know, you can, you can have great sex in the first date and it shouldn't matter. But if one, if one side is, is play is, is kind of using those cards too tactically, that's always a red flag. Right. So if a guy wants to jump into a relationship, like before you guys have even like gone on a series of dates or before you've like really got to know each other, red flag. Right. And, but if, uh, on the same token, if a woman is like holding off sex for months, just because she's worried that if, what, if you're, you're going to screw her and then leave, that's really unhealthy too. Right. You're not letting the relationship sort of develop. So, you know, I, I see that a decent amount with, with clients as they'll be like dating a girl and, and, for whatever re reason, the, the woman will just not, she won't let things progress because she's so worried that the guy's going to leave after they have sex. And that's just not the case. If a guy is ready, it doesn't matter so much when you have sex with them. And you, you need to be able to read that energy and not just rely on, you know, do I sleep with them or not based on some silly arbitrary rules. Well, also, can't you just like, like a uh, high school style, like, can't you like roll through the bases? Like there's a difference between like, I'm not going to sleep with you. And then like, let's just take this a little bit slowly so that, you know, when we yeah. decide to have like, you know, intercourse, when we're going for the whole thing, like we know each other, we can have that kind of on honest conversation. Right. Cause I think women are so fucking binary that they're like, you know, like, uh, I'm not sleep, you know, I'll do it like George Casillas. I'm going to do the exact opposite. Right. Like, so therefore I'm not going right. to, right, you know? And so I think what you're saying okay. is like, you have to read the context of the conversation and what's the guy earning and versus like his conversations that you're having and how does, how does he make you feel? By the way, like anyone could leave, yep. like you might break up after you have sex because you realize six months into it or five months into it, he's not your person. Yeah. Does, doesn't guarantee. Exactly. Um, so when, a, so you were just, you just had a moment and you were like, okay, I'm done now. Like I'm done. I've my friend, Chris, who you uh, listened to on the show, the conversation I had with Chris many years ago was like, I've seen enough big boobs. <laughs> like I'm 
you know, like I've done enough, right? Like I've, I've, I've had my, my dose of uh, double D's or whatever it was for him. And then he was just like done. Like it wasn't, it was gone. That like that need yeah. to sow the oats just was gone. Did that happen for you too? Totally. And you know, the, the sowing the wild oats thing for me, it was all my own sort of validation shit. It was, you know, cause I was kind of like the chubby kid in middle school and I got rejected from the first girl I asked to be my girlfriend. And that, you know, ba- basically led me to like not asking any women out until like the end of high school. So I was kind of a late bloomer. Right. Um, and there was like a lot of confidence issues and I guess trauma from that. And I needed to prove that I was cool by like going out and having all these experiences. And it took me a really long time to prove it to myself. It took me like 15 to 20 years, um, you know, until yeah. like my mid thirties. Um, and I was even aware of that for like the last couple of years of it. And I'm like, no, nope, for whatever reason, still got to do this, you know, still need to go out and, you know, was it as fun? Was it, was it as fun? fun? <laughs> was it as fun at the end? Cause you knew that. Did you have no, to like, it, it, yeah. that's, that's what changed. It stopped being fun. It became yeah. just like, like each six, each successive, um, you know, conquest or victory or whatever lost its luster. And after a while, I'm like, what am I doing? This is like really not fun or cool anymore. What I really want is just to like find someone awesome and, you know, kind of move on to that next phase of life. Like I started feeling a little bit old. I was like, I kind of want a family soon. And it was just a very like kind of black and white switch over. And then I started looking for that person. And then I realized like, you're probably not going to find this person in that party lifestyle scene. Um, And so that's, that's another one. If you just, if, if you're a woman and you're looking to see, you know, what type of guy he is, just kind of look to see who he's hanging out with and what he's sort of doing. Um, it, it doesn't always tell the picture or tell the truth, but you can get a lot of pretty good data from that. Like if all of his friends are like crazy partying single dudes and he's, you know, <laughs> going on yachts with them every week in Miami, odds are that's you know, probably prob- what he's trying to do. The odds are you might see him on a reality show in a couple of months. Um yeah. 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 Right. Um, and I get that. And I think it's important to hear for women to hear too. Like the, the, we all, I think have our wild oats days when I got divorced, you know, at like 38, I got married really young. I also like, didn't have much confidence. So I was like, wait, I can sleep with hot guys. This is cool. I could never do that before. <laughs> right. And right. then, and then, oh. and then you're like, okay, wait, like now it's just, is hiding something else. And it starts to lose its luster. So I think it's really important for women to hear like the behavior will show you who the person is. And a guy who is ready is not going to be playing the games. He's going to text you back when he likes you. He's going to want to see you again. He's not going to disappear unless he met someone else or he's not ready. Right. Totally. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, I'm really glad you brought that up because a lot of the time, I mean, the thing that happens to all of my clients and on the most, you know, the, the thing that happens most often is women disappear, right? They, they ghost or they stop responding or whatever happens. And I tell my clients, I'm like, guys, you can't take that personally because it's almost never about you. It's almost always about someone else. There's another guy in her life Maybe it's an ex-boyfriend or maybe it's a new guy that just came in the picture and he's, for whatever reason, there's a more of an emotional investment there for her with him. Odds are that will change and that will pass because most relationships fail. Right. <laughs> 99.99 or whatever. Right. Yep. Um, and as long as you don't get salty and send like a rude text or weird or send a dick pic or do something stupid, odds are as soon as that relationship, you know, unravels she might be available and she'll remember you as the cool guy who didn't chase after her or didn't do anything weird and then that can be the perfect time to you know to start something new and i've had that happen so many times with women over the years where i didn't you know i, I just simply I, I waited and i did my own thing i didn't take it personally that you know she wasn't getting back to me and then we ended up having like a really cool awesome time or a relationship and it, it happens both ways. So if a guy ghosts you or whatever, like, just, just it doesn't matter. <laughs> Odds are he might be back. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've had some clients who that happened and then they, I had one client who ended up marrying the guy who came back. Right. Like, so, yeah, um, exactly. so yeah, as we like to say around here, just chill the fuck out. Um, right. Yeah. I think that's really good. Okay. I guess it matters. So the, the one thing just, just to throw in there, like if he ghosts you after like a series of dates, he's probably not coming back. But yes. If it like, if it never got to the date or maybe it was just one date and that you felt like the date went well, but then he never heard from him. It's probably the, this thing I described before. Yeah. And I think that's a really good distinction. So I think that's really important. Um, okay. Kyle, we, we, we have to have you on the man panel sometime for sure. Um, so let me ask you one last question. Um, Gosh, I'm like, I'm sort of like, do I want to ask one or do I want to ask the other? Um, so if you think about the secret thing that men are really attracted to, like if it, if you could distill it down to one thing, what is it? Um, I think it's really, I mean, it's confidence, but that's a sort of an airy fairy word. So I'll, I'll make it more uh distinct i i think it's it's really knowing what you want Mm. and not settling for anything less and and having those like yeah this is what i want if if that's not you that's cool uh but i'm good and having the like there's nothing fucking sexier than a woman who who wants who knows that and who just she knows what she wants she knows that she can get what she wants and and she's not going to settle for anything less and that will cause guys to step up like if a guy really likes you and you know, like, and then you, you're exuding that type of energy, like he'll move mountains to, <laughs> to, to be with you because there's, there's nothing more attractive than that. And that obviously, I think that works both ways for men too. Yeah. But I think women forget that and they think guys are too, you know, like, Oh, they just care about tits and ass or whatever, right. or, you know, other things, but no, it, it's, there's nothing sexier than confidence in a woman, I think. And that is so true. And that's what I just really want to like shake all of your shoulders who are listening and be like, you are amazing. And if you got that, then everything would change. Like if you got it at a soul level, right? Because the whole idea that, because I've interviewed a ton of men and they all say women have the power. And if you say that in a group of women, they're like, no, they're like, no, we don't. Men have all the power. And so you need to feel your power. I think that's the real totally. deal. The women really do have all the power in, in, in the dating game. It's, it's, you know, they're the choosers. They're, they're the ones literally like making the choice. <laughs> right. And if that is blowing your mind right now and you're like, that is at, fuck you, Robbie, that is so not true. Then literally you need help <laughs> because it is absolutely 100% true. I have talked to thousands and thousands of humans with penises and they all say the same thing. So, um, that's where I'm going to leave it. Advice Great. from humans with penises. You have all the power. <laughs> um, Robbie, thank you. I hope to chat with you again. You are brilliant and your clients are lucky. Uh, and ladies, uh, go back, listen to this episode. I think there's a million points where you could life check yourself. We'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel 100% seen, heard, and accepted by a high caliber man is a priority for you right now, and you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at Dating with Dignity, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP, that's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com, and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista, and let's talk soon.